All right, welcome back guys. So today we're working on a still product and this is actually one of those extending pole saw things. So you can reach up and get a high limb. So he's having drive shaft issues and he wants the engine broke down and checked out and pretty much a whole, uh, all the seals and gaskets replaced while it's in here. So with that said guys, let's get right to it. All right, so here's what we got. So this thing was brought in like this. Shaft here was off the power head you know the motor of what you call the power head um, so that was off the gearbox was off with the chain on it uh, so but this thing runs this thing runs let me start it up and show you before we tear into it but he wants us to break this thing down and uh, And put a whole silk kit on it and clean it up and make sure he's good to go. Just like that. So it is an older unit, but you know, you take care of these things like what I'm about to do for the gentleman, they'll last for 20 years. Alright, so I'm going to break this thing down, we're going to throw it in there, and we're going to get everything cleaned up. So make this job easier. Get you a drill, man. This is just telling you, it takes the, you know, speed your times up. Uh, you're not twisting on your wrist as much. And, you know, this thing, you really only need some basic pulls. Okay, so this is a T27 Torx bit. So that's what you're going to need to get started here. So, pop the air their uh, box cover off. I'm going to clean that up. Their filter looks okay. We'll just blow that out. Start ripping this thing down. Oh, that screw's already in there. I, I see a two here. One, two, and then you got one in the back right here. So now this cover is ready to be lifted off. Um, a little tip is you want to push this down in there. This is your spark plug boot and make sure that's not going to hang it up. See? See all that dirt in there? We're, we're going to clean that up for the time. Like I said, this thing, there ain't nothing wrong with it. But we're, we're going to break it down. Um, one thing that does go bad on these guys is the cam wheel gear. This is what drives your push rod for your valves. This is a, a what they call a four mix. Okay, so it still has the same principles as a four cycle engine, but you still use the um, <clears throat> the mix within the oil, your two cycle mix. So it doesn't have a sump, you know, wet sump where there's oil. Um, you know, it's still lubricated through the mix you put in with the gas. All right, so we're, we're gonna get the handle off here. So you're gonna need T25. I'm going to take this little cover off here. <clears throat> you have two screws. You got one here. No, no, we're, we're just going to loosen these because I'm going to show you. They do not have to come completely out. Okay. Right there. And these have little tabs here. This little channel sits in their box there. I'll put that back together. Also, you know, when I tear one of these down, I clean everything. I mean, everything. This thing goes back together, uh, it'll be like almost new. Alright, so while we're back here, let's take off the recoil. Got three screws. We're gonna get all that clean for the gentleman. All right, so now we need to take off the air box here. No, no, we need to finish taking this off. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So we're finished taking the, the handle off here. Now, like I said, this thing came in disassembled, so when I put it back together, I'll 
be able to show you how it fits on the drive tube assembly. So you have two wires here. I'll pay attention to your blue one. You know, this is kind of hard to get it mixed up, but I've seen it. It's the longer one. That's where it's going to go. It's the farthest one out that way. Huh. This thing's actually missing the rubber thing. There's supposed to be a rubber boot here that these wires sit in, so I'll have to get him one of that. I see your cable here. You're going to pick up out of that groove. And you got your throttle cable coming through here. It sits in a groove right there. It has a fitting just like that that fits in the carburetor. That I'm going to not clean. I'm just going to wipe that off. <clears throat> Finish taking the fan housing off here. Bearing sounds good. That's good. Okay, so now we're gonna take the clutch off. And this is sticking. I can see how it's sticking. So we'll have to get in here and clean this up for the guy. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some hand training oil. I'm gonna spray it in here. I'm gonna get these bushings freed up so it can rotate freely and not stick like it was. Okay, I'm gonna set that up out of the way. So far, guys, it's been a T27 and a, a T25. All right, so now we're gonna take the flywheel off. So, still makes a special tool that you take the spark plug out here. What the hell did I do with that thing? I just brought it over here. Thought it did. Oh, here it is. So this is a piston locking tool. I do believe this is lead. So basically take the spark plug out, th thread it in there, and it allows you to lock the flywheel. Okay, so this is not necessary. That way you don't have to go buy a tool, but get this off you're gonna need an impact okay and this is a, a 13 millimeter or half inch and all you technicians please look away just like that it comes right off all right so let's let's get the other side here while we have the 13 in our hands all right this is the starter cup for the uh the paws on the recoil assembly is little um channels in here is what engages the plot the uh the engine. Oh, uh, you know, looking at this thing, it looks pretty clean. But we're still going to take this thing down and just do a good job for this gentleman. I'll right, just take this lower cover off. Still T27. Then we're going to jump back to the front there and get that flywheel off. So now this part can be tricky. So you're going to put your nut back on there and like it still also makes a special tool that threads on here and allows you to tap it off. So this is hard to do. You have to be a pretty good shot here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold up on the fly one. I'm going to hit right here. I thread that nut on there so I don't damage the crankshaft when I'm hitting it. Sometimes it's hard to like that Tom baby. Just like that. Comes right off. See? Uh, and it's tapered and it's keyed. Just to show you this nut. That's the wrong one. That nut throws right on there. Well, this should go on both sides here. Yeah. That's weird how that one went right on that side. So we're good. We didn't cause any damage. The coil here, we can leave it on there. I don't think it's going to be in the way of what we're doing. That way we don't have to mess with a gap or none of that. Uh, fuel lines will have to be replaced. That's usually how, you know, that's normal. 
All right, so let's get the muffler off. Now this is where you may run into some trouble sometimes. From running through heat cycles, these do not want to always come out. So that one did. We got lucky on that one, boys. You can tell which one are the muffler screws because they're always rusted. All right. This is your gasket. We won't need that anymore. But, you know, some of these you could reuse, honestly. But, you know, you can get a steel kit for about 10 or 15 bucks. Alright, so now this is where you may have to make a special tool. What I mean by that, you're going to need an 8 millimeter or a 5 16th socket ground down. Because you have to be able to get in here. Right? So you have your tank vent hose, that has to come off. Sometimes you just gotta cut it off. Alright, in the bucket. In the bucket. Alright, so now you're, you, you want to loosen the fuel cap. That gets rid of any pressure that would be in the fuel lines. Here, pop these off. Easier said than done sometimes. So these are another thing that's, you know, they're inexpensive, you should probably change them while you're in here anyway. Oh, lake can feel everywhere, we'll go figure. Okay, you got the both fuel lines off here. The shorter one is your fuel inlet, and then your longer one is the return, back to the fuel tank. Because as you're priming, see that? As you're pushing, it's squirting, and then when you let up, it's sucking. Now, there's a hose in here. This is your fuel pump signal to the, um, to the fuel pump diaphragm inside the carb. So you see this hose in here? I've got a hose right here. So it's right there. Let me get a light. See that hose? Sometimes that gives you trouble sliding that carburetor off. Honestly, let's, let's just pull the tank off. Because now that just comes right off, get these two rubber bushings threads right in there. Not threads, but seats in there. Alright, so now we'll work on this hose. So it slides right off. Throw it in the bucket. Alright, back to the uh, T27 here. Let's pop this intake tube off. Alright, again, in the bucket. I'm just scraping this old gasket away. Yeah, I'm using a razor blade on aluminum. It gets the, truth, gets the job done. All right, so now, all you technicians look away again. All right, 
you can return or pop the valve cover off <clears throat> the valve cover got one bolt goes through the center you got a ceiling washer here and then you got a cork gasket on the perimeter trash don't need that anymore here's your ceiling washer it's a copper washer we don't need that anymore oh you son of a bitch okay put that in there you'll know it's that one because it's got a white it's got a white thing on the threads <clears throat> all right let's get into let's take the um rocker arms off here so this is a, a 5 16 or an 8 millimeter um let's see and i'm gonna back these off until i can get the push rod off there These are these are a tension nut, so they'll fight you the whole way. They just don't break loose and take them off. But it also allows you to set the valves with those instead of having like a lock nut. <clears throat> Alright, so now that's off. Take the push rods out. These are the same. Same part number. You can put them on either of these off or intake, not a big deal. So, got that off. These you can just leave on. Just, just leave them float there. It's not gonna hurt nothing. Again, T27, four screws. This is your back door to the cam. Cam, uh, there's little places to pry here. One on this side right here. Let me get a better screwdriver. Okay, there's your cover. And you got two pins in here, and one fell out. So one goes here. So before I get any farther, not a big deal, I should have did this beforehand, but you have to time these. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna time this real quick. Okay, so we're going to go clockwise. Oh, that fell out. That's not a big deal. That's the other one. So basically, so... Alright guys, so there's an arrow on the flywheel. See that arrow? Let's see here, right, uh, right there. So that has to line up with the flywheel there, with this right here. Hmm. I don't know if that's a good shot for you guys. Anyway, that's uh, you guys can see better there. So you see this arrow? This lines up with your. Uh, armature on the flywheel okay and also you got two arrows back here you got an arrow here an arrow here if you look real close you got little you got little uh, casting marks here in the uh, cylinder wall we got one here and one on this side so you line that, those arrows up there and you'll know because your piston will be all the way up at top dead center so when you take this thing apart, it, it's you really have, you really don't have to time it now because it's coming apart. So don't worry about it. I'm just showing you so you know when you go put it back together. You know I am surprised. This cam well looks fine. The 
usually this is all burned up here due to dirt and you know ingestion and this is worn I mean honestly I can reuse this I can reuse this not a big deal so all right moving on So I'm going to start putting the engine parts in something else. That's why I keep that all together. Alright, let's take this the bottom end here. Again, four screws, T27. Again, T27 down here on the bottom. And these screws are the same, I think. Yeah, they're the same as the rest of them. But I'm still going to keep them in this box right here. Alright, so now let's give this thing a couple... Alright guys, so... Camera shut off. I guess it was too hot. I don't like that. I mean, it is probably 100 and something down here in Florida, so... Anyways, so I already separated the case. So I was getting ready to knock with a hammer. So there's the bottom half. It's like that, and then uh, there's your piston. And this thing here, man, it was really taken care of. I mean, there's very little wear on the the, the piston skirt. The bearings are fine. So this. Delman, you know, still has himself a nice uh, still here. Uh, so, what's um, you know, there is some buildup in there. Not a big deal. Clean all that out. Clean all this old silicone, Durco, they call it. And here's what the cylinder looks like. I mean, it does have some wear. Uh, but this, you know, this job's gonna be a straightforward job. You know, to clean everything up, put it back together. All right, so to speed things along, I'm not gonna show you guys me cleaning everything because who the hell wants to watch that? But get your wiggle wheel, knock that stuff right off there. All right, guys, just like that, I'm cleaning up. Wash everything, get it back together. Get in there and get all that out. Everything cleaned up and ready to put back together. Let's get to it. All right, so here we go. We're ready to put this thing back together. So first thing we're gonna do is just we're gonna take some uh, quartz cleaner or brake cleaner. Clean this out real good. See that? Also, I'm clean the ceiling surface here. That's some silicone left there on that one, huh? Cleaned up. Now, so you're also going to clean where the oil seals would sit right here. Clean that out. Clean that out. All right. 
And so now, now we need to coat the piston with some oil before we slip it in there. Also position the ring. So I'm gonna put a one open end of the gap there and I'm gonna take this 180 and put it there. <clears throat> and believe me, they're gonna move around inside the engine, so. But that's where we're gonna place them for now. Wall up the skirt real good. And then I'm gonna take a little bit and slip it in here. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. And you also want to coat the oil on your wrist pin. A little, a little bit of oil like that. Then we're going to take some uh, oil and we're going to pour it right in this bearing here. Just like that, we're going to spin it. Alright, that side's good. Same thing here. You pour a little bit in there. That's good, and you'll spin it. And also your connecting rod bearing. Okay. All right, so now it's ready to be. Now, guys, this is a tapered board. Okay, so you don't need a you don't need a compressor for these uh, piston rings. Okay, and then remember your gear goes towards this opening here. So I'm just going to start this down in here, rock it back and forth, and then that's it. Just like that. Spins good, feels good, awesome. Alright, so since I've done hundreds of these, I know about right here with the crank is level with the surface here that that's up the top dead center and pretty close to uh, your timing. So now I need to figure out how to get this thing to sit. Alright, so this gasket kit is not the exact kit that works with the 101. Everything is the same, but one intake gasket. I'm going to show you. Not a big deal. They will still work with this. Okay, there's your two oil seals. The gasket I'm talking about, I believe... Is, is this intake gasket so this is what came off and if I had to I can reuse this one so I'm gonna lay these gaskets out here and they also send you a valve setting tool in the kit all right so now we're gonna take your oil seals we're also gonna apply a silicone or the dirt going on the outside of these. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to oil the centers of them. I'm going to oil the centers. Get those ready. And then I'm going to apply the silicone to this first. And then we'll do the uh, oil seals last. Now I messed up. I don't have the freaking nozzle. So you're going to have to bear with me here spreading this out. And you lay it right in that channel. Don't get too carried away like I just did there. You don't need a lot because the, the, there's not a lot of clearance. I mean, it, well, these pretty much smashed together, so that looks good. No, I'm gonna put my finger there. All right, before this starts setting up. Right there, that's what I wanted. All right, so now let's put on oil seals real quick. This is directly out of the service manual, what I'm doing right here with these oil seals. Dab it on there, dab it on there. And then we're gonna slip it on this right here. Remember, these are pre-oiled. I'm gonna stop right there. Then I'm going to get this other side started. I'm going to wipe this shit off my fingers because it just gets everywhere. 
Okay, so now I'm going to pick up on the crankshaft a little bit. Hmm. Or not. I don't necessarily have to, but it makes it better. That's what I'm doing is working these seals in. Okay, you're going to push them until they bottom them out. Okay. Okay, you can push them all the way in. All right, now we're ready to seal it up. Double we'll check this again. Yeah, let's put a little bit more silicone right here. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, a little bit more over here too. Yeah, that'll work. All right, now if you pay attention, you have an extra slot here. This is the side with the with the crankshaft gear. All right, let's just slip it down on there. Get your screws. Ah, shit. Let's fasten them on. Make sure your oil, your oil seals stay there. Okay, that all looks good. Well, broke that fucking bit, damn it. Good thing I got another one. Alright, let's move on. Alright, so here we are on the second day. So, right, so we sealed the bottom engine pan to the cylinder. So now what we have to do is we'll make sure our piston is at top dead center. And I'm going to show you how to check that. So if you remember, when we took off this flywheel this area right here that they mold in that area right there lines up with the ignition coil here at the screw so of course this is keyed so this only goes on the crankshaft one way if you see yes yeah, so that's top dead center Okay, so I know that's all the way up. Remember how I explained these little notches in the case. It's gonna line up with the arrows on this. Alright, so let's get that in. Alright, now you wanna get you some oil, some two cycle oil. And always just take it and pour a little bit in a cap there. Okay, this up. Alright, so remember. You put the gear in first, and I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on this. A little bit there. Okay. We're gonna oil the pen and the rag, and then we're gonna slip that in there. Whoa, you did there, fella. And you can see. It's there is a lined up. This notch and this notch. That's what you want. Okay, so now let's put the lifters on. Push rod lifters. Now, you have to put in you have to put in this side first. You have to put that on first because it sits lower. You see that? It sits lower. And these, you can, you know, you can put them in wrong. One goes one way, one goes the other way. They're identical. 
these are the same but they are not built asymmetric so let me see here so this one will go down like this right just like that put some oil on it it lines up with that hole and this one goes this way I'll put a little bit of oil on the lobes here all right now now we have to put the uh, push rods on hmm where are the push rods oh I put them in the tray here again these two are the same okay they can go one way or the other does not matter I just put a little bit of oil on the ends slip it in there line that up then roll this up I'll set this on and we're going to turn this nut down Okay, so that's all good there. Okay, that's good enough to keep it on there. We'll set the valves last year in a little bit this side put that on there make sure it's lined up on the valve stem again just tighten her down good enough all right so now we're good we're ready to close this up clean this off free of any oil silicone there and we'll clean this off a little bit of silicone left on there so we're gonna get rid of some of this you really don't need that much. And this stuff here sets up pretty quick. So you have to assemble the cases pretty <clears throat> quickly. And remember, the four little screws. spec all right so now I'm gonna loosely put the valve cover on because it's easier to set the valves with the tank on and all that stuff so it sits so it sits upright so like I said I'm gonna loosely put on the valve cover here put that on there like that and turn this down Alright, 
so let's get the carburetor mounting flange on first we get all the old gasket off that don't take too long get the silicone back together here Remember, cut towards your buddy, not yourself. Oh, see, knocked up my damn finger. All right. So before we put this on, you gotta make sure you got your bolts through. Okay. What I mean by that. Get rid of all this fucking paper towel with all the silicone on it. Man, it's driving me nuts. We don't need this anymore. Yeah, I still got a little bit of gasket in there. Get rid of. All right, and you gotta get this. I don't think this is necessary. Well, I guess it helps to go the right way. Now you still you don't, you don't need that in there. The hell am I thinking? All right, so remember, it was this gasket that went here. And what still did for you is that they cut these holes where you can start your screws in to help you get everything started here. All right. I guess it would help if I was on the right side of the engine, huh? That looks better. And the way I know that is your impulse hose here, which hooks up to the carburetor. Alright. Make sure these not stuck in behind there in any way. Did you see that? You gotta make sure these are pulled through. Okay, that looks good. Let's drop them in there. Perfect. And torque specs on all this stuff, man, just hand tight. They're little screws. You know, if you're if you're having to torque these things, you should be working on them. Working on it. That hose there is still pliable, so we'll leave that there. Alright, we can put the exhaust on. Let's do that real quick with our new gasket. Now this gasket sits in here just like that. You got these little cutout here. It fits right on the case. Perfect. Awesome. Remember, rusty screws. Oh, found them. There they are. Throw them in the hole. Throw them in. I don't like how that one started, but guess what? We're going to drive her in there. That one there. Sometimes they like to cut new threads. I just drive them right on in. Never hurts them. All right, so let's start putting the bottom end on this old girl. Get this on. I guess we want something. Um, let's see here. Yeah, just like this. Just like that. And it was the two little screws with the smaller head. They're still T27s. That hole there, that hole there, and this hole here. Alright, so now you need the two rubber pieces. 
And this is where the fuel tank goes. Okay, one there, and one there. Okay? And then these little guys in here slip right on in there. Just like that. Okay? And now this thing can sit on, stand upright on its own. Yeah, I'm gonna loosely put this spark plug in there, just... Okay. Really. So all I'm gonna do is slice up the sides here. This is the return line. If this line here looks okay, I'm gonna leave that one there, but we're gonna change this one and the vent hose line. All right, so there's that one. Okay, and we're just gonna, I'm gonna just give myself just a tad bit more there. that on there I'm going to change this hose here again we're just going to take it here take a little extra remember you can always take off you can't always add so a little bit extra is not going to hurt Now we can inst install the carburetor. Let's put this on there first. All right, so remember. So this kit came with this gasket. Okay, this is what came off of it. It don't matter. These holes are not relative to this carburetor. Okay, so you can use this kit and get away with it. So this gasket, you're going to put this on first. And put this on first. And then we're going to slip the car on. Remember, this fitting goes in because it goes on your pulse hose from the crankcase. You have to line that up. Okay, perfect. Now we hope the fuel lines up. Okay, I'm going to trim this one down a little bit. Just a tad. A little bit at a time. So I'm going to do this one. Let's do this one first. Slip that on. Come out and around here. Okay, that all looks good. And this hose goes to the air box. We're not going to do the air box yet because we've got to get the throttle cable on and that kind of thing. So. Alright, so let's put the flywheel and clutch on. Take that back off. This is where this special tool comes in handy. You still can do it without it. Uh, like an impact but you have to be careful you don't want to get too carried away hammering on this stuff since I have the tool now the torques on that on this is like 10 foot pounds okay and that feels about right there then we're gonna do this side Okay, it fits right on. There's no washer, nothing. Just slip it right on. You gotta be a nut. These nuts are the same. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, and we're going to turn it pretty much 360 degrees until it hits the lock. Okay, feels good. Let's take this out. Thread this plug back in there. Set that back on. All right, so let's get the clutch. Let's get the clutch back on. So these here, these have to be loose. There's little rings in here. If not, the clutch won't work right. So from the looks of it, I'm gonna have to go knock these around with a punch. So here's what I have to do. I have to take these and try not to break them. I'm going to go right down through the center. Nope, not moving. Not moving. Ouch. So, that's not good. This is when shit starts breaking. see if I have another clutch laying around. Alright, so here we are at the vise. So, I'm going to have to press this freaking bushing out. So, let's see what happens here. Should fall on oh, I know. Get me a breaker bar. All right, it went that time. Yeah, I sure did. See that? Push right out. Man, I didn't know how that clutch was even working. So let's finish getting out of there. Man, this is not easy trying to line all this shit up, trying to hold everything and tighten it down. Okay, that's what we was looking for. There it is. So that's what we wanted. Alright, so about 20 minutes of fouling and grinding. I had to sand these down. And then I had to foul this out. And, and this is what you want. Just like that. Okay? That way that clutch can engage, disengage. Engage, disengage. 
All right, let's put, put it back together here. So, we've got this thing all apart. You got arrows. They face out towards you, okay? Just like this one, got an arrow right there. Slip it in the hole. Okay, these are said and done. Okay, so you got them on there. Now you're gonna pull out on these. You're gonna set them just like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then you go, then you're gonna put these through. Well, I'm gonna put some anti seals on these real quick. And this way. Maybe help the next guy. Okay. And this little shoulder goes down. I'm going to show you why. You don't need a lot. Just a little bit. Alright. So these are the same. But one goes this way. And then one goes that way. Okay. And then you also have two little wave washers here. Uh, I'll lay this one down first. There's something to hold this up here. Okay. Then the washers. Hmm. Well, it's like a shut one of those things here. You know what? That's right. So I'm going to put this on next I'm going to tap that in there okay so honestly I need to put this on first tap that on there tap that down that on now we're looking good Slip that right down. Then your top cover. And then we need the screws. And that is how you do it. Alright, torque the spec once again. All right, let's move on. All right, so now we got the clutch on. That's all squared away. This is the piece I was saying was missing. This is what holds the wires. So I had to rob Peter to pay Paul. So it just sits right in this channel. Push it right on. Okay, you're gonna push it all the way back to butts up against that. And your wires sit right in there. Okay. Those often get lost. Alright, um, so we're getting pretty close to buttoning this thing up now. Alright, so we can put the fan housing on <clears throat> and button that up. You know, let's check the flywheel gap real quick. I'm sure it's okay. It still recommends, I do believe, 10 thousandths. So with these two filler gauges together, that should be about eight. So a little bit of a drag there. Yeah, so we're good. We're good there. You know what? Let's upgrade this guy to a better housing. Make this thing look a little better. This here is actually a aluminum housing. 
This is plastic. Identical. Besides that. We're gonna, we're gonna upgrade this guy for him. I'll have to wipe that off for him. So, alright. So I'm only gonna put the bottom screw in because these two screws here and here also mount this upper shroud on. So that's on there. Now we can put the handle back on, but let's before we do all that, let's put the ass in on this old girl. Okay, three screws again. Oh. Three screws again. Son of a bitch. Was this your first day on the job? You know what? We need to set the valves. Let's do that real quick and do the top gasket here. But before that, let's put some oil on it. We didn't put any oil up top here. A little bit in there. A little bit down in there. A bit down in there all right so let's see where we're at so just like any engine you set the valves on the principle is the same so we're going to find top dead center all right so that's on the intake okay and that's good boy that's i don't know how i did that that's dead on there this one needs snugged up just a tad that's perfect. Now I pull this over about 10 times and recheck it. All right, intake, decompression. I think that's on the decompression there. Yeah, it was on the decompression. Yeah, that's good. That one needs to get a little tighter. And these are lock nuts or Kenson nuts. So, so that's it. There's, there, there's no other locking nut or whatever. That's the adjustment right there. If you look real close, they have it staked right there. See that? All right, so we're good up top here. So remember, new cork gasket. It just sits on the outside there and there is little tabs you just lay them right next to it you got one here you got about I don't know five or six or so okay if I can just line that some a bit up Jesus Slap the old valve cover on. Oh, new ceiling washer. Forgot about that. Don't forget your old ceiling washer. Yeah, let me clean this bolt off. That bolt there is pretty damn old and dirty. Where the hell was that dirty dick feeder at? telling you to torque on these because it's inch pounds very little that feels good there all right so let's run the spark plug in
Ah, shit. Okay. Now, let's not put that on. Alright, so now, now, ready for the air box. Okay, ready for the air box. Put your gasket on. do that let's put this little plastic no I can't son of a bitch keep forgetting I got to um I got to put the uh the throttle cable on so let's just do that and get that over with I hate having this thing hooked up because it's just when you turn the engine just flopping everywhere all right, so where this um, wire loom ends is about where it ends in here. Okay, maybe a little bit past, I lied. I've been known to lie. All right, so this throttle cable has to fit in. It has to fit in this the right way. So you gotta make sure it's rotated correctly. Okay, so it actually goes like that. Okay, there we go. Just like that. Alright. Pull that up. Okay, and also, this screw right here. This screw right here, it needs to be equal here, down here. So it needs to be turned in a little bit. If you notice, it raised this up. So now we're about even here and here. Like I said, it raises this up and puts the right amount of tension. All right. Now let's let's hook your wires up. Remember the the blue. Remember the blue one was the farthest one out. You gotta make sure these are tight. See that's kind of loose. So just take your pair of pliers, squeeze it together. Don't get too carried away, like you're squeezing your old lady's titties. Just just a little bit, just a tad. All right. That feels a lot better. And then we're gonna slip this one on here. That one felt good. All right, so this is what this little rubber piece is for. This isolates the ground wire from the frame. If you didn't have this here, it would lay over top of the aluminum and it would just chafe through and expose the wire and short the ignition which means no spark to the plug, to the spark plug. So that sits just like that. Okay, we're good there. I'm liking it. All right, so now, back to the old carburetor. Okay, so now let's put this little cover piece on. So remember, this little groove here lines up down here. Just slip it on, just like that. I'm not going to tighten it yet, because I'm going to put the air box on. Again, this one just slip right in there, just like that. Then I'm going to put the air box on, and then we're going to grab our two screws, two bolts here. Remember, you gotta take a socket and grind it down so it fits in there. Either 15 16 or an 8 millimeter will, will work. Alright, don't 
can hook your hose up back here. And your hose from the um, tank vent. Hmm. That's right, this got kind of twisted out of the way. Yeah. Let's hope that don't leak now. That, that fitting got twisted earlier. So slip that on there. Sweet, let's get the air filter in. Got the air box cover. Or some blow the air filter out. It looks okay. Okay. Air box was cleaned. All right. Let's tighten the air box cover down. put this pop shroud back on button this thing up and I got one in the back back door Betty or no back door beauty Yeah, sometimes them screws like to cut through holes, so I just cut them. All right, moment of truth. All right, moment of truth. Remember, this stuff here, Darko, this stuff sets up in like 20 minutes, so you can pretty much put this thing back into service immediately. All right, moment of truth. Stills usually start on the third pull. Take a look at his old shaft. 